kid. What? Diet. We Diet. barely ever talk about it because actually no reason. <laughs> but today we are. Juji and Tom, our differences, our similarities in our diets, and they've changed a lot over the last year. First off, how we prepare our meals. Throw them faster. Second off, cooking. <laughs> Third off, <laughs> drinks. Second, fourth off, <laughs> supplements. Oh, flavoring, sauces, Jeez. convenience. You'll figure out what this sweet potato means later. Seventh, fruit. Is that a peach? C. We have a number of commonalities. You'll see those at the end of the video. For now, we're gonna go to Juji in, what is he doing? Uh, wearing the same thing as you. Today's video is not about diet. It's about us robbing a museum for highly prized <laughs> artifacts. <laughs> okay, welcome to my kitchen. I spend more time in here than I do in the gym by far. I probably spend more time in this room than anywhere else. And it's great because I love this kitchen. Since we moved into this house, this kitchen is the best room in the house. What I found is really helpful is I have all my utensils on this little thing. I got from Ikea. We used to keep it in like this like vase thing. I think a lot of people keep all their like utensils in this thing that's stacked up. Yeah, I don't damn, have one of those. Damn thing always fell over. You'd be sitting there getting something out and something else would pop out with it. But it's just so much nicer just to have them on the wall. Pots and pans I use pretty much. You're looking at them right here. I got two cast irons. Uh, this one's a little deeper for mm -hmm. cooking meat. Uh, I don't clean it all the time because it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> and then I got a small pot for steaming vegetables. I flash steam them. And this is a big steel pan that I cook a lot of ground beef and fish in. So those are basically the utensils I use on a daily basis. I don't use tons of cooking utensils or, or things. I have a little frying pan. I just got this one. There's some kitchen store closing and it was too expensive to buy mm -hmm. unless the store was clothing. Clothing the cost of 50th percentile. You, yeah, it's a magnetic. It's a space saver. It's, uh, it's not level. All right, what's in your hand there? This is the torch. We're gonna torch. We'll use that later. If you have a kitchen you love, and a kitchen you like, and a kitchen that you enjoy being in, you're gonna do a lot more things, and you're gonna cook healthy, and you're gonna cook things that you enjoy, and, and my diet, like, since being here for what, has it been two yeah, weeks? two, two weeks, weeks, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. I've already bought two air fryers. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> two music boxes as well. You got, yeah. a music, you got a music box that cooks rice, mm -hmm. and you got a music box that doesn't cook rice, it's louder. Uh, we're gonna have a meal with that in a, in a bit, but we're gonna do a workout that we're not filming. But we are filming on our Instagrams, follow Juji, follow me. Why do you have two air fryers? Because I don't know what you're doing. I'm trying to figure out which one is best for what and I believe they have different strengths. Uh, I don't want to go into too many details because we're still in the testing phase and there's no definitive answer. <laughs> but we will be using this one today, or this one, I'm not sure. <laughs> this one. Ah! <laughs> we're gonna make crispy rice in one of these today. Okay. okay? We're gonna give one, maybe both of them a chance. So we're just gonna cook these eggs real quick. Cause they're gonna eat meal two. Right. Which is often the same as meal one and meal three. Uh, this is what I've been eating for like the past year. Of course, my diet's gonna change over time, especially when I'm getting- Wait, ready. your first, your meal one through three is the same? It typically is, yeah. The, the amounts change sli slightly, and sometimes like I'll remove vegetables or add vegetables to those meals, but the base is the same. It's usually beef, rice, spinach, and maybe an egg. I, d I don't think I've ever had a same meal in a row in my life. Every meal of mine is different. This is my breakfast in 10 seconds. Turkey sausage, spinach, sweet potato, pancake. Egg. Fuck! No! <laughs> so eggs cooking, water's cooking. And this is 1,000 grams a day. This is a bag of 255 grams, so you're looking at four bags like this a day. That's like, what, 12, 13 bucks a day probably in spinach. If you buy it from Publix, if you buy it from Costco or some other place, it's a little cheaper, but. Up to a thousand grams a day. And the reason is because uh, spinach is high in potassium. It's a low FODMAP vegetable, which doesn't give you gas. Uh, do you do this for every meal? Yeah, most meals. I don't eat vegetables at all in my meals. About one or two meals a day I skip vegetables. Because, I mean, if I'm eating that much vegetables over the course of a day, why do I have to eat them spread throughout every meal? Eating less meat than you were 
in pass. Is that true? Oh yeah. Yeah. So my total protein per day is I try to keep it around a gram per pound of body weight. I'm like 235, 245. What's your calories per day right now? Uh, 3,600 to 4,000. So that's about where it's at. So you're looking at, you know, it's, uh, the reason is just because I understand protein, like builds muscle and thermic effect of feeding, you know, it helps you stay satiated when you're, when you're on a diet or deficit. But when you're larger, it's just, I don't need it. You know, carbs are protein sparing, you know, eating more carbs is going to help me preserve my muscle mass. It makes me feel better. One of the commonalities is counting and measuring. I didn't want to do it, but you, you abstain for a while, but I mean, it works. Oh, uh, you have to. It's yeah. not hard. It's really not that hard to, to write down what you're eating. Um, it is. Uh, just such a numbers game with your food. That's that's what, what it is for me. It's just, just uh, mm -hmm. you. I lose the relationship with food when it becomes just like calories in. You've been caring about your diet in this way for like 20 years. Fast plus protein. Good. Carbs plus protein. Good. Fats plus carbs. It'll kill your fucking ass. And I cared about my diet in a different way for 20 years. Yeah. It, it takes me five minutes a day to log my food. It's not, but I'm not, I'm not saying it's about <laughs> minutes, dude. It's not about minutes. It's a different thing. It's what, just is, like, what is it about then if it's not about minutes? I'm saying that it, it's, it's the, I, the act of actually doing it. The, the weighing of the food and uh, like counting the calories is just taking away from a lot of what people enjoy about food and the culture of food. I, 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 I think that's true if you're going out to eat. If you go through a, like a nice barbecue restaurant or something, then you're stuck trying to figure out what is this food. Yeah. And you could get a little anxious like is it trimmed to eight, one eighth fat or is it half fat? You're looking at it, it's like there's a lot of marbling in the meat. You're like, I don't know how fat is this. You have to make a guess or whatever and some people are going to have a hard time with that because and then you, you, there's other foods on the, on, on the you know, sides and stuff. You're like, I don't, sure. even, I don't even want to try to figure out what this is. So you won't eat it. So yes, I agree with you there that, you know, in that context, it, it can change your relationship with food. But from a very routine standpoint, I mean, you can get used to, you got your favorite meals. You got, you got the things you eat on yeah, a Yeah, but, uh, uh, but I'm in a different phase of my life, man. I, I used to eat meals with people all the time and roommates and we would just cook random things and eat them you know there's no weighing involved there there's no counting calories there right and that's how most people are eating it's just like god oh, they gotta eat so uh they're gonna eat something it's not what you shouldn't be eating that you are so much it's what you should be eating that you aren't so outside this calorie counting hyper focused neurotic dieting that bodybuilders do and you see your fitness people do Man, have a cookie, have a piece of pizza, as mm -hmm. long as you're getting your vegetables in, and yeah. as long as long as you're not overeating at every meal, you're yeah. gonna be way better off than if you're sitting there beating yourself up over you know having some candy or something. Probably the most interesting utensil you use and most asked about on your Instagram. Okay, so I don't even check my Instagram DMs um, because every uh, message on there is about this food chopper even if I don't post about it for a month if I do one story post with this food chopper uh, The world seems to lose its mind. My mom has had one of these in her house since I was a kid I never remember not having one. She used to make tuna salad with it hmm. And then I bought one thinking I was gonna make tuna salad and then when I started making these mashed meals I saw it sitting there. I was like, let me try that instead of this damn potato masher, which just makes shit go everywhere. And it was way better. 125 grams of beef, mm -hmm. uh, 250 grams of cooked sushi rice, uh, 255 grams of spinach, and one egg. And I'm going to add something else to it real quick, just for fun. Jalapenos you grew? Yeah. And you grow tomato and basil too? I do. And it goes right in. Now we can go into flavorings and sauces. Correct, yes. Opgies, flavorings, sauces, some Sam's. Now keep in mind most Sam's. I, I don't they're most know. Sam's? They're mostly Sam's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I live with someone else, so of course not everything in here is mine, <laughs> especially <laughs> in the fridge. Uh, I don't really use these. Uh, these are mine. I like these, but I really only use this one. 
The jalapeno. The jalapeno one is very good. It's good. The chipotle is okay. The habanero is great too. It is just very hot. Sam breathes this. This is like water to her. This everything bagel seasoning. She just like, she puts it on everything. I'm not a big fan of putting it on everything. No. Uh, these are mine. Coconut aminos. I'm going to slow down on these because I've been over, over using them, but they go well on this meal. We're already done with juju sauces and mine is just going to be looking into fucking endless infinity pool of sauces. <laughs> is this ketchup, another ketchup, another ketchup? How many ketchups are you putting in the fridge? Four ketchup. I only have one ketchup in my fridge right now. That's 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 appropriate. Having yeah. four half-used ketchups of different brands from different years is not okay. That's what <laughs> most people's fridges are. I'm a sauce queen. Only I don't date women that don't have tons of sauces. Or big sauces, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I like wide sauced ladies. Quit filming that because there's more out of sauces. Oh my god! I have an addiction to sauces. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Don't look at it for too long, folks. All right, well I guess you're gonna get the here. you're gonna get the hi sauce. Pick one that's your new favorite. I don't know. Are you you're a minimalist? With sauces, yeah. And then I'm a maximalist. I have a sauce fridge. I don't actually have a sauce fridge. That's true. I, I actually, I love when sauces just don't fit in my fridge. Right. I mean, you just keep some food in your sauce fridge. A, a link for a drive document description where you can buy sauces. I don't want to do a favorite. Right. I'm going to give you three. Three, yeah. three good ones. Three good ones. Three good ones because that's bullshit. It's I hate more, the favorite yeah, okay. thing. She does that. I agree. You don't have to have a favorite sauce because you got sweet sauces, you got spicy sauces. This is some avocado sauce with yeah. smoky jalapeno. Yeah. You can see the calories. Yeah. It's very good. This is really good. Ingredients? Yeah. Yeah. Primal Kitchen makes some really good sauces if you guys want. Just simple ingredients, no sugar added. Mm -hmm. Their steak sauce is really good. It's titanium flavored. Don't, don't, don't! Oh my god! That tastes a lot worse on its own. This meal's done. Uh, it happened quick. The rice cooker, I put it on delay in the evening, so when I wake up, I have rice throughout the day, and it just keeps it warm. Now, do you eat sups and vitamins before or during this meal? After. After. I take the I take vitamins and uh, after the meal. Oh. This is 45 grams of protein, 90 grams of carbohydrates, and 25 grams of fat for a 750 calorie meal. And uh, with all my meals, I take Glyco HD and Vita HD. They are uh, HD supplements. I love their products and I work with them. So, oh, let me show you my sprouts. These are sprouts sprouting in jars. I've been doing this since May and I haven't stopped. So that means okay. it's a good thing if I keep doing it, right? <laughs> I mean, you're supposed to cover them with a towel. They're supposed to be in a dark place. They just happen to, I just happen to have this over here, but I have them on this uh, drying rack. These are a bunch of sprouts mm -hmm. and they're not done yet. They take about five days. I haven't been here, I've been out of town and when I'm out of town, you know, the sprouts go away. And that takes me about five days to reboot them. I've got a broccoli, alfalfa, and a radish mix here. Fenugreek, fenugreek, onion sprouts, fenugreek. Um, obviously, if I have three jars of fenugreek, you know which one is my favorite. <laughs> and that's just for taste. Uh, I'll just throw those in and chop it up. Or I'll take a mix of these and chop them up and make something I call sprout salad for a low carb meal. Make some sprout salad. First thing, you're gonna to wanna to get a big bowl. Optional, put some meat in it. Broccoli sprouts. Onion sprouts. Fenugreek sprouts. Sesame oil. Or for a lighter option, coconut oil spray. I'm gonna be using the coconut oil spray because I'm on a low fat diet. Coconut aminos, about a tablespoon or two. There we go. If I'm uh, high on carbs for the day, I just wanna get like a little bit of protein and more vegetables in, and it's something I can eat at night just to kind of make me feel a little full if I'm still hungry but don't have the calories to spend. Uh, it was pretty easy. All I did was I bought a book and I read. What spurred you to buy the book though? Like, What was the initial impetus? Instagram was just uh, recommending stuff on Explore and the Sprout thing came up and I was like, what is this? I honestly read like 20 pages out of this book. <laughs> it's all I needed. I just went mm -hmm. to instructions and read a couple other things and jumped around. But you can get all the information on Google. Just 
how to grow sprouts in jars and it's like the easiest thing you just need seed jars and water and, and that's it mm -hmm. and everyone if you're asking uh, where's the master and where's the sprout book and where's Tom's sauces I'm putting a massive amount of links in the description in a Google Drive doc so oh my god really yeah yeah this is really helpful for people uh, so it's basically a references file go there if you need anything and it'll be organized by Juji and Tom but not by much else. <laughs> uh, bib and bop in 15 seconds. Spinach, radish, rice, crispy. Beef, Gucci's first burn. Yep. Uh, you want two eggs, one? Uh, one. Shit. <laughs> Is that I made that rice cake thing exactly 300 grams. 300 grams of rice. This meal has 720 calories, 39 grams of protein, 100 carbs, and 16 grams of fat. How many calories is that? What? 720 calories. 720? Yeah. Wow. Is that a usual meal for you? Yeah. yeah my meals are usually between 500 and 800 calories. Cool. Mine is 100 grams of rice, one egg, and four ounces of steak. So I just have 200 grams less of rice. So my Instagram stories, if uh, anybody had questions about diet, you can start eating, bro. So the key to this is just mash it all together. Really? Yes. Where's my food masher? First. It is. You made rice cakes. Wow. <laughs> I got 950 messages. Uh, look. It uh, just keeps going. Okay, let's get a question. We're right? gonna not eat the whole thing on screen because we just want to eat the meal. He asked, "What is y'all's opinion of diet sodas, and do you ever drink them?" I like carbonated water, but no, the sodas have a lot of artificial stuff in there. On airplanes, I drink Coke Zero. Hmm. There you do. <laughs> Branson Lee asked, "How many carbs should I eat for my arm day tomorrow?" <laughs> 100 grams of pure sugar. Uh, Furious Pete asks, "If Taco Bell gives you diarrhea and diarrhea makes you lose weight, is Taco Bell considered a diet?" Yes. How does your diet change from training days to off days slash non-heavy days? Mm. You just eat less. Mm. Hard to measure things like weighted vest back puts. Oh How much do you eat? Probably about six to eight pounds. Six to eight pounds? Because I'm thinking like if I'm eating like a thousand grams of rice, it's like two pounds. Like in a week? You eat more oh, than in six a week? Oh, in a week? That's like a day. That's a day. In a day, maybe about... 30 to 60 pounds. What's the healthiest food that you can't get enough of? Asks Quinn Land. Sweet potato. Rice cakes. I'm as close to orgasming from food science as I could be. Not from the food itself. This is pretty good, but it's not that great. It's, it's, it's the food science that's mm -hmm. working. Let's do two more. Is how often you shit factored into your diet? Yes. If I eat too many of my meals closer to the end of the day, yeah. I notice I wake up more in the middle of the night because there's digestion shit going on and I might have to wake up to poop and it disturbs my sleep. How do you guys deal with wanting to drink with friends on the weekend? We have no friends. We don't have weekends. Oh, Crohn's. We, did, we haven't mentioned Crohn's yet. Uh, my elevator speech for Crohn's. Yeah. Uh, 17, I just got diagnosed uh, after a ton of misdiagnoses. Uh, and I lost, so I was like a healthy 145 as a 17 year old and went down to 115 at my lowest. I wasn't comfortable with taking my shirt off, so it's not a shirtless picture at that point. <laughs> uh, I get random flare ups now, but if my diet is bad or we're traveling or we're stressed, things happen more. Yeah, on a daily basis, I just try to be consistent with my diet and eat the foods that work well with me. And I've learned that over the 14 years I've been diagnosed with it. So mm -hmm. my sister also has it, my cousin has it, uh, and my uncle also has it. So your uncle has it. Yeah. It's Gosh, all, it really runs. It's all family. through the family and my sister has a lot worse than I do. Mm -hmm. You guys get a hangover, it's one day, and then if you're fifty years old, it's three days. Uh, I get a hangover, it, it feels like it goes on for a week and really? I just have bowel issues and stomach issues. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Especially certain alcohols. We don't want to go into that. We're done answering questions from Instagram because there's just so many and a lot of them about uwu and Ooh. juju and the best diets and there's no best diet. That's the whole video is about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know Sam uses it. Um, 
All the time. You want to use? You want to see how many times Sam has used this blender? Hold on a second. Wait, you have a time? It yeah, it'll it'll tell you how many shakes you've made. She's made like eight thousand shakes in this thing. No way. No, no. When does it show? Just spinach and orange juice with a couple ice cubes, and that's just to get more spinach down in my diet because there's almost only so much spinach. I want to chew. And we don't drink meal shakes anymore, like protein shakes. I haven't in a year or two. And the reason is because the results are better when I'm eating real meals instead of blending them up and drinking protein powder with chocolate, banana, and peanut butter. And all that stuff tastes good and stuff. But honestly, the results are better when you're just like eating meat and rice and vegetables. Yeah. And but, it might take more time. It might take more effort. But yeah. we've seen what the results it produces. It, yeah. It produces better results. Worried about, you know, they're not getting the results in the gym and they're trying really hard and they're having really good workouts. Well, guess what? You can spend a lot of time optimizing your diet. And this is the, the spot to really find, you know, I guess glaring holes in, in your in your training. It is. And you know, one of the things that's just kind of meta in this video, and, and I think we mentioned it in a workout video not too long ago, actually outside in the garage. The kitchen is really important. If you don't want to be in that room, you're not gonna take the time to clean a dish after you use it or uh, get something cooking on a pan or just uh, chop up something. You're gonna try to avoid the room altogether, but if you can create a little bit of ownership in that room, I know a lot of people live with their parents, just buy a couple, buy a pot and write your name on yeah. it. My name's Josh, this is Josh's pot. My name's Josh, I live with my parents. This is my pot, mom and dad. Yeah. Don't touch my pot. And Kyle's cast iron. If you put a lot of spinach in there, it'll be kind of foamy. <laughs> yeah, I've see seen it. that number before. Maybe she's used it so many times that uh, it just broke it and now it doesn't know anymore. Four figures, five figures, Sam hit 10K, broke blender, blender Y2K, Y2 blender. I don't like them putting chemicals in the blender. They turn the freaking frogs gay. Do a little hopper on the top where you put the beans. Mm -hmm. Just grinds it as you go. So, boom, boom. And it's got water on the side, obviously, but you know, this thing had really bad reviews on Amazon. Why? Why are these really like the way an awesome coffee makes? Your coffee is a little, 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 uh, a little more hands off than mine. I do like the French press. I don't use it in the morning. I usually just drink this in the morning because any coffee you drink in the morning that's just not the worst coffee in the world is going to taste okay for it me. Is. Uh, but later in the day, I might want a cup of decaf or something, or a half calf, or just a little bit of extra kick, and I just want more coffee because I love it. And then at that point, I'll make a nice cup of uh, a French press. Do you drink any other things? You've got me into this stuff. Oh yeah, the yeah. The Ticino. Yep. It's pretty good. It's, it's a good nice for night. coffee substitute. It's really good too. Mm -hmm. I've always really liked this. In fact, you can create like a nice blend of like Ticino, Dandy Blend, decaf calf coffee just kind of make a mixture if you just want to like cut your caffeine and uh caffeine intake down while still getting the taste of coffee while bearing it up and finding like a good mixture so if i'm drinking something i'm not eating something okay and that helps for cutting and that's one thing also uh if uh, i try not to drink a lot of water with my meals i try to drink in between meals Same. i used to think the whole oh water dilutes the digestive enzymes in your stomach and it helped you know i thought it was bull but if you actually just drink water half an hour before or after meals instead of with meals, you'd feel better. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It works. So I was like, okay, well, I feel better, so who cares what, what I think? <laughs> oh, I've, I've trained my cats to make pour over coffee. <laughs> my coffee process is a lot different than John's. I ordered it September 24th, which was yesterday. They roasted it that day and then delivered it four hours later to my house. Wait, you said, wait, four hours later? Four hours. What uh, the heck? So we're gonna make some coffee, and uh, it's gonna be uh, yeah. yeah. Douchey. How's the coffee, John? It tastes a lot different from a French press. I think they say that French press coffee is oily. Yes. Yeah. Well, this tastes the opposite of that. Yeah, that's so, why I don't drink French press. It doesn't make my stomach feel good. It's good. Oh, okay. Uh, this is my supplements: coffee, tea, drinks, all of it. Uh, I don't do too many sups. I do mainly sups at Gigi's house because he's got sups heaven. Protein powder that turns into a spread. Oh, that's good for a lot of people because a lot of people try to make their protein powder into a paste. And this one works. <laughs> to blur this out because it's bad. It's evil, Oka. Energy drinks. 
Soda water, Zevia. I like this Suya green juice. I would say I drink eight food ounces a day. I don't make my own juice because it takes so much time and I don't enjoy it whatsoever. No, juicing, I used to juice and it was, it took a lot of willpower to do it, man. A juicer takes a long time to clean up. Even the juicers that don't take a long time to clean up, take a long time to clean up, so. Uh, so this is actually my cheat food. Sweet potato is my favorite thing to eat. <laughs> It's your snack, your cheap food, your convenience. I think I went up to like 10 sweet potatoes one day where I kind of lost control and just kept adding sweet Whoa! potatoes. Yeah, dude. It was a record. It was a record. But I just uh, microwave them. I just wash them real quick and poke holes in them with a knife. Yep. And then, you know, most, most microwaves, they have a potato button. Okay. You know, again, I share the fridge with Sam, but... None of those are mine. Yeah, and it is more like my side. That's yours. Got some eggs, a lot of spinach. Yeah, okay, uh, so yogurt? Their fitness people's videos and their fridge looks like it's perfect, like it's just stacked full of these prepped meals and everything is nice and neat with all the green and red and blue and, and yellow juices and the jars. It's, it's not like that in real life. This is real life right here. Let me just be honest, we just did this like 10 minutes ago. Cinnamon, Splenda, and I, got, I have to stop eating this, actually. This isn't good for you, but I've been putting a little bit of Walden Swarms pancake syrup on it. <laughs> well, coming from my segment, yeah, I eat a lot of flavorings and sauces that aren't good for me. <laughs> and, and especially circus substitutes, but... I go light on it, and if I'm really going to try to be strict, if i got to like, take photos the next day or something, or a really important video with my shirt off, I, I'll probably just cut out some stuff a day or two beforehand that might make me look bloated or retain water or something because I don't know what the hell this is and I don't know what's in this. There's some weird crap in it. This is? Dessert. Dessert, snack, convenience, all in one. It's comfort food for me. 100 grams Greek yogurt, some cinnamon, Splenda, sometimes that Walden syrup I showed you in my fridge, but this is when I'm sitting there eating on the couch and Sam's watching TV. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's good, man. I like it. John eats sweet potatoes for snacks and convenience. I like crunchy snacks. Uh, and protein ridges, great. Uh, this is a protein bar. If I wake up hungry, I eat this thing. This is a 100 calorie Fat keto max. cookie. Fat hydrated carrot sticks, mm -hmm. I like them. 60 calories, crunchy. Seaweed. Seaweed, if you don't like it, you don't like it. And if mm. you like it, you only like it because it has no calories. Right, kind of like pickles. No, not like pickles. I forgot um, about those. Joe Rogan got me to eat more venison in my diet, and I would say that's why I've gotten so lean. Because of Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah because of his spaceship podcast mm -hmm. studio. And, Juji, this is the protein thing I present to you. Did you see the macros? Mm. So, you, and that, that's not a full, you get the full serving if you want. Mm. So, that thing is pretty gnarly. It's like flexible dieting lifestyle makes it. Look it's at this. really tasty. It says you can enjoy it on a spoon, just like I did. You Actually, guys can too. <laughs> uh, I'm a more of a snacker than Juji. I just can't get over that. So I've just replaced my snacking in at least a somewhat healthy matter and tracked it. And I just fit it in macros. If I'm like, oh, I want to eat a carby snack. I eat less carbs at dinner. Right, but and it's not if it's not I if it fits your macros. Still, it's just no. But it is a little bit of a fit. It's just macros. a little bit. It's like ten percent of it. Yeah, yeah. Ten percent <laughs> doesn't have to be a hundred percent. But you like good. that? Well, uh, hell yeah, it tastes good. Of course, it tastes good. I can't think of anything that I'm eating that's like a sweet tooth thing. I don't really have a big sweet tooth, but I mean, this is. Is there anything in my diet that's sweet? Like, what about fruit? I don't eat fruit. Why not? You're eating a fruit. What is that? You don't want this? Things in common, John. Oh. I got dirt on it. <laughs> we went over all these differences, and there are a lot, and our relationship for food with food is quite different. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, you guys know my past. I worked in restaurants. I worked on farms. Uh, I did a degree in horticulture. Food was basically my life the enjoyment of food and making other people enjoy it for for years so this is a very it's very different for me uh, my mine is not the same no i mean <laughs> you've been on a similar path of your path of food oh I'm, like, yeah where, yeah yeah where I've i been... am now compared to where i was 
I still enjoy food, but it was yeah. like very different part of my life, you know. Right. You you <laughs> you give a you you care about the enjoyment of food and having others enjoy it. Yeah. I just the food is fuel for me, so it, uh, I don't eat ice cream, man. Like eating the fake stuff is not the same as just making custard and making the real stuff. Yeah. And I and I'll get back to that in a, in a period of my life, but yeah, that's different. Juji is not made custard and, and for hundreds of people. <laughs> no, I haven't done that. I haven't made food for hundreds of people. It's a little different. Cro- what is that? Cross- I stabbed my finger. Crossroads. Time out. Both of us do not consume really any bread, uh, milk, or cheese. No, that's correct, yeah. I stopped consuming bread because I feel better when I don't eat it. I don't have. A, I don't know if I have a gluten intolerance. I probably don't, but I just feel and look better when I don't eat it. And mm-hmm. honestly, I don't miss it. And uh, cheese, I eat cottage cheese. Yeah, Greek yogurt. There's still a dairy product. We both eat cottage cheese. But I don't drink milk. I have done Gomad, a gallon of milk a day yeah. for thirty or sixty days. I think I tried to get the sixty, got the forty-five, and I thought. Uh, I was having health problems when I was like 20 because of that. I've got a picture of Juji during that time. Yeah, strong. We're puffy, but, yeah. Uh, puffy, puffy, puffy. We were go matting. I was go matting. It was not ideal. Bad for my health, bad for everything. Right. Just, it's just, if you're on a cut, you're not drinking milk. It's unnecessary calories. So. I don't even miss it, though. I miss it if it was with cookies. Uh, but things. I eat Ezeko bread. Uh, but it's still a little different. It's sprouted. sprouted grain. Yeah. yeah, it's a little different. Both eat a lot of sushi rice, and John has gotten me on the rice cooker game. Yeah. Because well, it's just easy. Well, rice cooker is like you just set it, and then it's ready uh, when you wake up. Mm-hmm. And you have rice throughout the whole day. And rice is a really good food for performance. And if you uh, build your carb tolerance over time with exercise, it's one of the best things in my opinion, for, for most athletes. Uh-huh. And uh, we got the sushi rice from Antoine, you know, so you can get the long grain, whatever the crap, from the bottom shelf of a store, or you can just go online, spend an extra 20% on sushi rice from Amazon or some other website that sells it. Weighing food and counting calories. I didn't start doing it again this year until June 1st when I started my diet. Mm-hmm. Uh, thankfully, I, I live with Sam, and she's been weighing her food for like a year and a half, two years, counting her calories, so someone else in my household already is doing the same thing. So we're both weighing our own foods, we're on the same gain. It's easier to live with someone that's doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. It makes it a lot easier. We got two scales in the kitchen, one across, one over here. So, you know, we're... Yeah, and you started weighing yours about a month ago, two months ago. I mean, any successful cut or diet is most likely going to be counted and tracked because it's just really hard to eyeball things. It's really hard to know your TDEE and get it perfect without knowing... Dude, it's not intuitive. That's the thing. You it's think not. it's intuitive? It is not. Because on if I go like two rest days in a row, I'll reach like 6 p.m. I'll have like four hours left in a day. And I'm like, dude, I've only consumed like less than half of my calories yeah. for the day. And from a recovery standpoint, that's not good. You need to still get the right amount of calories. So even if you're dieting or cutting, you still need to have to force these foods down. To, or not force it at that point. It's just a reminder, like, oh, crap, yeah. I, I got to eat some more food, which is good because you're like, oh, I want to eat more food. I just, I didn't know I was this far behind. You won't know that unless you count it. You know the days I'm getting not enough because I wake up in the middle of the night hungry mm-hmm. and then have to eat a protein bar or something quick. But honestly, uh, it's even less intuitive than that because on some of the days that we're working out a lot, I'm not as hungry sometimes. Right. It doesn't make sense. I'm yeah. like, it's, again, it's 6 p.m. and I'm like, I still got, half my calories left and I've worked out for two hours outside with Tom filming all this stuff and was running around like a maniac this morning. The only way to find where I'm at on any given day is to count my calories, man. I get it. Nobody likes it, but it's it's necessary and we're both doing it. And we're both using Carbon App. Uh, we're not sponsored by them. It's Lane Norton. Mm-hmm. He's a great dude for diet and nutrition. And it's very intuitive. It's working really well for both of us. Yeah. You can favorite foods, you can scan foods. You can put meals, you can put everything, and it's really clean. And I know people, you've used MyFitnessPal. I never used that. I never used an app before this one. And right. I'm me glad neither. we found this one. Me neither. I used to log all my stuff on pen and paper. That's why I resisted it for so long to start doing this again. Because I used to count calories when I was 18, 19, 20. You know, I got 
hundreds of logs on paper with uh, the columns, calories, half an hour every day, at the end of the day. I was dreading it. And then these apps come out and it's just like, it's way easier, Copy the entire meal from yesterday and paste it today since it's the same thing. And maybe just change the amounts a little bit. It's just like, it's instant. It's like, gosh, it's so much easier than it used to be. If you're tracking all of your spinach and and some pickles and some kimchi and certain sauces, that gets tiresome. Yeah, I'll track some vegetables, but like, exactly. Kimchi, sauerkraut, pickles. Uh, any th- any food like that, I-, I won't write it down. Yeah, right, but, exactly. You know, Mushrooms, like, oh, nine calories? Darn. Yeah. That's the reason why I've been going over my calories, that uh, uh, that eighth of cup of mushrooms I've been mm-hmm. the nine not calories tracking. In those yeah. mushrooms. <laughs> we both eat a lot of vegetables. Yeah. They're filling, they're fibrous. Uh, you should eat a lot of vegetables. We know a lot of people that are in the fitness community that are athletes that don't eat many vegetables, and it's still a little confusing to us. Both yeah, of us, it's a uh, weird. having eaten a ton of vegetables because I worked on farms and you just cook with different things. Mm-hmm. You did it because it, it's nutritious and it works. It, you need it for a diet. Yeah. So we both came to the same th- same thing, but like it, it, that's common because it should be. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm sprouting. I don't. I mean, sprouts is like there's very little calories in it. It's, right. It's just for health. It's like taking a multivitamin. It's just like it's covering a nutritional base there. Before we get to the last one, which will be a little surprising to people. Uh, the 10 minute walks mm, or yeah. exercising even what I what I do is if I have some sort of house things to do or errands that are going to involve walking and moving about I time them so it's after meals so I get a little activity yeah, that's nice uh, but 10 minute walks are important and we both have done them and it's it's a game changer just add some activity and you feel better you digest better I mean, you'll know instantly that it's working because you start burping and farting. and Yeah, I throw uh, up. You get the energy from a meal much quicker than just sitting there, you know. So you're basically uh, helping your body digest the meal. And you have to you have to put intention into digestion in order to... It's not just about, you know, how much food you're consuming. It's whether you're assimilating it into useful things, you know what I mean? My weight last night was 246. All right. 246? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm the heaviest and leanest I've ever been. And the thing is, I'm consuming less calories than I was during the powerlifting bulk in January. Where I was force feeding myself every mm. night to the point of tears. My evening goal was to weigh 245 in the evening. Now, I'm slightly hungry in the evening, hmm. and I'm and I'm weighing around 245. Train my body, you know, to digest and and to work with the foods better, and the foods I'm giving it are easier for it to make use of than That's the crap I was putting in my body when I was dirty bulking. I'll never dirty bulk again. No. I'm never doing it again. And I'm never gonna like bulk B-U-L-K. again. B-U-L-K. No, not real word. A friend, Antoine Vaya, who just won the Cali Pro, he doesn't believe in bulks. There's no. a lot of bodybuilders that don't believe in this like bulking style and and it's more of like, yeah, this growth cycle and just bodybuilding. It's just not eating in a deficit, as we calls it. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> and, and you go through periods of uh, caloric restriction and slight caloric surplus to train your body to make use of better of the food that you're giving it. You know, you have mm-hmm. to go through these just like training. You have deloads, you have phases, you periodize your training. You should probably periodize your diet. Mm. And you can't just watch a Brian Shaw 10,000 calorie a day diet and go, I'm going to do that. You know what that's like? Right. That's like setting a thousand pounds on a deadlift bar and failing it over and over again. Got to progressively overload to that caloric amount. So why would you bulk by just uh, doubling your calories? Yeah. Right. Just go and go mad and feel like crap. Gain a bunch of fat. Is that useful? I, I didn't need to do that. I didn't either. I looked stupid and I felt stupid and it wasn't healthy for me. And now I'm like I'm energetic on. 1,600 calories a day and doing way more activity. It's like yeah. outrageous, you know? You're way more efficient. I know, I know. My body's a wonderland, as they say. And there's this concept of cheat meals, right? That's been ingrained into fitness. Like, you gotta have cheat meals. And here's a picture of me with pizza and abs. And here's a p- picture of me eating donuts on an elliptical. Uh, and, and Juji and I have found that for different reasons, but we both don't do it, is cheat meals are, are just, I, they're not in our diets right now. I haven't had a cheat meal in probably six months. If I have one cheat meal, daddy's gonna have another. Yeah. And, and then and then his little brother Tommy is gonna have another cheat meal. 
and then he's gonna think okay I want that flavor again and I, I that's why I don't eat ice cream that's why I'm not eating th these things and I do enjoy them and I enjoy my diet right now without having them in it but I don't crave it like if I had the one cheat meal a week I would crave it for the rest of the week and be thinking about that constantly. That's why I don't do them, but your reason is a little different. I just found that I didn't need them. I mean, uh, some days I just increase my calories and I'm happy. Uh, of eating yeah. the same foods I'm already eating, maybe a couple extra sweet potatoes here and there. But Carbon App, we're talking about Lane Norton. A lot of his stuff is really good, and I think one of the things he said is... I want to talk about the verbiage of cheat days because I think it's a bad way to refer to these days, these higher calorie or maintenance calorie days. When you say the word cheat, it implies that you're doing something you, that, that's not good, that you should feel bad about. They eat clean during the week, and when they get their cheat day, instead of it being a, well, I'm gonna have some of these foods that I haven't been able to enjoy during the week in moderation, and have a few more calories to, to feel better and energize my training and uh, perhaps maintain a little bit more of my metabolic rate, it becomes, I'm going to eat as much as I can fucking stuff in my mouth. Yeah. These people think they have to have a cheat meal uh, once every seven to 10 days and they just double their calories for the day. They end up taking the entire week of dieting to lose what they put on during their cheat days. That's not constructive. Like, oh, the body can only store so much fat on any one given meal, so I just get to enjoy this and a lot of it's just gonna pass through. No dog, doesn't work that way. I always tell people I don't have cheat days because um, I don't feel the need to cheat. If your diet's so great, why do you feel the need to cheat on it? I include all the same foods that I eat on a high calorie day as I do on my low calorie days. Now, with the caveat that I may include a few more calorie dense foods on a high calorie day, but I'm not doing that because I think they're bad or I think I can't have them. I'm just doing it because I have more of a caloric budget to work that into. But when you make it the idea of, well, I'm, I'm having all these things I can't usually have during the week, it creates this kind of dichotomy in your mind where, okay, I'm having bad foods and then you feel bad because you're having bad foods and then you end up eating even more than you probably should. We hope this video was nice and gave a comprehensive diet analysis of what we've been doing that's working for us <laughs> yeah and we're both very happy uh i'm cooking so much more i'm cooking with good ingredients trying different methods of cooking yeah you are and it's crazy you got this he's got a, he's got an air fryer kick right now guys excited for him to do the legwork for me so that i can just figure out yeah. exactly and how to I, cook then I, you the get right the, the right air fryer <laughs> i get the right air fryer yeah, yeah figure it all out for me tom i'll outsource that to you you guys will have uh, adapt certain things that we do to your diets but we'd like to hear what what you've been doing what's working for you yeah if you're losing weight if you're going to go through a growth period yeah i mean diet's personal and it's cultural and it's rich it's a very multi-dimensional topic and it's complicated so i mean a, a lot of the things that we're sharing is this is just our process we're yep. not saying it's necessarily what you have to do mm -hmm. we're not saying uh we're right about everything we're saying because it might not work for you but you know you're probably going to take a lot of this out of constant context but hey you know that's that's what's going to happen with just about anything that you're going to share that's related to diet uh, yeah. tell us your favorite air fryer recipe or hell yeah tom what, stop eating the titanium yeah, dioxide it's <laughs> the dirtiest bulk you've ever done and Woo, why you're yeah. going to do it again or not a diet high five i can do better okay that's okay. we're not doing it. It's hard sitting down. Oh, mother. There. Was it on was it on frame? Yeah. <laughs>